Ooh, can you do mine? Sure. What, paint your nails? No, that's for girls. Wh- what? Honey, it's just paint. No, no way. What are the teachers going to think? And the other kids at daycare? What? But, but that's so fear. Alyssa gets her nails painted. I want my nails painted too. Too bad. So sad. Cry about it. Ugh, this is not fair. See, now look what you did. I didn't do anything. I'm just saying that- I want my nails painted now. Good morning, Graham. Oh, are your nails painted? Yes. Aw, well, I think they look very nice. Thanks. I know. When my brother and I were kids, we would go to this after-school program slash summer day camp thing for a couple hours every day until our parents picked us up. But when I aged out and went on to middle school, the after-school program supervisor, who I'll just call Miss Sheriff, told me to come back when I'm older to work there. So I did. In my senior year of high school back in 2015, I earned community service hours by handing out snacks and helping kids with homework. And in the summer of 2016, I worked as a bona fide teacher to save up money for my first cat, Luigi. I made a video a couple years ago talking about my experiences working there, and you guys really liked it, so I wanted to share a couple more memories from back then. Like I said in my past video, all the names and character designs will not represent the actual kids or adults I worked with, and I'm doing this to protect their privacy. So, the first story I'd like to tell you is about a kid I'll call Stitch. Because he did a really good impression of that blue alien character. Stitch was super sweet, he loved arts and crafts and movies and pretty much anything that allowed him to be creative. He was also autistic, which sadly made him kind of an outcast. Now, it's not that the kids were outright mean to him because he was autistic. They could just sense something was different about him and the way he liked to play. Hey Stitch, can I use this block? No, I'm not done with it yet. But you're just lining them up. Yeah, I'm playing with them. That's not playing. Give that back. Whoa there, Buster. What is going on over here? I wasn't done playing, and, and Devin, he wasn't even playing. He took my block, so I told him to give it back. Devin, dude, if he's not done with that block, you have to wait your turn. Ugh, okay. Yes. And Stitch? Hmm? No threatening people. It's not nice. We good here, boys? Yes, Miss Alyssa. Good. Miss Alyssa? Yes, Mr. Stitch? You're my favorite teacher. Aw, thank you. Why am I your favorite? Because you don't yell at us. Oh. Yeah, I don't like when people yell at me either. I won't lie, I wasn't sure I was cut out for this job when I first started, because I was basically micro-parenting at the age of 19. But hearing feedback like that made me more confident in being the adult these kids needed me to be for approximately six hours every day. Which brings me to my next story. This one's about a girl. Hi, my name is Delaney, my favorite color is yellow because it's bright and happy and wonderful like the sun. Who I talked about in the last video. She was a perfect ball of happiness and sunshine. She was super smart and very curious about the world. Sometimes to a fault. So one day while we were on a field trip to the local bowling alley, her curious eyes landed on my phone's lock screen. Ooh, is that your boyfriend? <laughs> yes, that is my boyfriend. But more importantly, I'm using the web browser Opera, who is the sponsor of today's video. Opera has just released the latest version of their desktop browser, Opera One, and it's a game changer. It comes with a free VPN, an ad blocker, a built-in music player, messaging apps, and so much more that you can customize to your heart's content and it's completely free. The feature I really like is called Tab Islands. I'm one of those people who will have like 80 tabs open and I'll be too afraid to close them because they're important. I need them, I just don't know which is which. That's where Tab Islands come in handy. As you browse, Opera will automatically color code your related searches into little islands, which you can condense and expand for easy access and organization. So when it's time to go back to a previous point in your silly search session, you can easily locate each topic, condense them, and continue digging deeper into your internet rabbit hole. I'm visiting a friend in Tokyo this December, and Opera automatically organized my searches for hotels, flights, and what to wear to stay warm, leaving me with plenty of room to open my desired amount of 80 tabs without judgment. Another important feature is the integrated AI, Aria. 
I'm a fan of ChatGPT for helping me come up with fantasy names for a graphic novel I'm writing, but when it comes to real-life events, ChatGPT can only provide limited knowledge past 2021, and it's currently 2023. And Aria is different. It's able to scour the internet to give you much more accurate answers to present-day questions. So if you'd like to try a completely free, customizable, beautiful browser with up-to-date information and user-friendly tools to help make your time on the internet as painless as possible, Use my link below to download Opera for free today. Now, back to my story. Like I said before, I had volunteered at the same daycare a year prior, back when I was earning volunteer hours as a requirement to graduate high school, as well as dating someone who was a very, very unsafe person. Thankfully, a lot has changed since then, including the person I was dating, which Delaney took notice of. Wait, that's not your boyfriend. Yeah, he is. Well, I liked your old one better. <laughs> well... I didn't. Really? Why not? Uh, well, he wasn't nice to me. Really? What did he do? Of all the people I've talked to about my ex over the years, whether that be friends, therapists, police, even the internet, who I didn't realize would listen so intently, talking to a kid about it was and will always be the most difficult time I can recall. I wanted to explain the dangers out there because She'd soon be the same age I was when it all started, but I wasn't her parent. Who was I to have this kind of conversation with her? So the best way I could explain it was like this. Well, he was really controlling and mean to me. Like what? What did he do? Well, remember how my hair was really long back then? He made me cut it. And I didn't want to cut it. But when I said no, he was more mean to me. He was mean to me when I said no about a lot of things. What did you do? I cut it. And then? And then he was still mean to me. Obviously, this was only the tip of the iceberg of horrible things he made me do, but that was all Delaney needed to know. <laughs> well, I will never date a boy who makes me cut my hair. Good. You shouldn't. Yeah, and I like your new boyfriend better. Good, I do too. It was difficult, but that conversation made me realize you can and should talk about serious things with kids. They need to know these things. You just have to do it in an age-appropriate way. I feel like a lot of adults don't realize how insightful kids are and how big of an impact we as their role models make. I think a lot of adults just see kids as clay that they can mold a person out of, but kids are more like sponges. Sure, they can squish themselves into whatever shape you want them to be, but at the end of the day, they're gonna snap back into the person they are and have always been, but not without soaking up what you taught them and taking those memories with them wherever they go. Here's what I mean by that. There was a girl at our daycare who I'll call Hope. Miss Sheriff briefed me on Hope when I first started working there because, well, she came from a rough background, to say the least. And coming to daycare was a much needed break from her home life. The thing is, though, when you're like seven, your nervous system is all out of whack 90% of the time because you don't feel safe, it can make life much harder for you than others. So she was a kid who had difficulty paying attention, she argued a lot with other kids or even adults, and subsequently, she ended up getting in trouble a lot more often than other kids. And I'm briefing you on this because one day at the snack table, I heard her say this. You know what my mom told me? What? That gay people are gonna burn in hell. Now, I don't know about you, but the last time I heard a kid say things like that was when they were bullying me or other kids like me. I grew up in a place where it was very unsafe to be anything but straight and cis, and it floored me to hear this continuing on with the next generation of kids. Even more so because one kid at the snack table, who I'll just call Phil, had two moms. And this was something all of the kids knew. And believe you me, I wanted to speak up, but I also knew bringing what some parents would consider radical ideology into their daycare with their kids would end in me getting yelled at by their parents. But at the same time, I could see the trauma baking into this poor kid, and if someone didn't say something soon, it would be cemented there for a very long time. So I took a deep breath 
and I, no, we do not talk like that here. Well, my mom said, I don't care what your mama said. That is not true, and it's very mean. You can talk like that all you want at home, but as long as you are here, you will not be disrespecting anyone. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Good. Can you believe some people still think like that? And teach their kids that? No, I, I can't. I could not believe my born and raised Southern Belle coworker said that, did that, but I'm so glad she did. I know from experience that it means a lot when an adult stands up for a kid, because it makes it clear to the kid picking on them that this mean behavior won't be tolerated. And to the kid getting picked on, they'll know there are safe people they can trust out there who will rally behind them. And I'm sure there already have been and will continue to be plenty of times like this for Phil to face as he grows older, but I'm happy to know that at least one time wasn't so bad. So with that, thank you for watching my videos. Remember the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. And as always, stay safe.